Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jackie and today I am here to do a book review for you guys. So it's been a while since I've done a book review. I just haven't had the time to sit down in full or film a full length book review as much as I wanted to. But today I am here to talk about a book that I just need to sit down and talk about because I feel like this book you either love it or hate it and you guys will definitely see why when I show you the book in a second but I just I reviewed the rest of the books in the series and love those and then this is a spin-off in a way so the book I'm reviewing today is Harry Potter and the Cursed Child by Joan Tiffany and Jack Thorne. This book was considered to be the eighth Harry Potter book. This came out in July of last year and Yes, it's taking me a year to finally read it. And I loved it. <laughs> that might be an unpopular opinion because you either, again, love it or hate it. But personally, I really, really enjoyed it. So like I said, this is the eighth Harry Potter book in a way. This takes place 19 years after the events of the Deathly Hallows, the seventh book in the Harry Potter series. And this follows Albus, who is Harry Potter's youngest son, as he goes off to Hogwarts for his first four or five years and follows his adventures during that time. This book, again, is a very mixed review book. It is a play, so it's very different than the rest of the books in the series. It is, again, a play, so we have, you know, scenes like that. It's all script. And... I think that's what a lot of people were thrown off by when they read this book is because, again, it's so, so different than the seven other books in the series. But personally, I did theater for four years in high school and this was able to bring me back to those days when I was doing theater and I could just see it play, being played out in my head as I was reading the book, which I always really, really enjoy. So diving more into my thoughts on like the characters and the plot, starting off with the characters, I really enjoyed all the characters we got to see. Again, we were following primarily Harry Potter's son, Albus, but we did get to see characters from the seven other books, primarily uh, Draco Malfoy, Harry, Ron, and Hermione. We got to see them make quite a few appearances, which I was very happy about. And then we also saw a bunch of new characters. So as far as Albus, I really enjoyed his character. I had a kind of iffy relationship with him as the book was going along, but I did learn to like him. I found him annoying at times, and he reminded me a little too much of Harry at that age, but again, I did grow to like him. Then we also follow another character primarily. His name is Scorpius. He is the son of Draco Malfoy, who is my favorite character in the Harry Potter series. And... I loved his character. He was definitely my favorite character in the book. I just loved him. He reminded me so much of his dad. But also, and this is kind of weird saying this, he reminded me a little bit of Hermione. I mean, Harry or Draco Malfoy and Hermione never were a couple, but I don't know, something about Scorpius reminded me of Hermione. Maybe it was because he was very book smart. He like, you know, learning. Maybe that's why he reminded me of Hermione. I don't know. But I really loved Scorpius. And the other characters that we saw that were from the other series, the other books in the series, so Draco, Harry, Hermione, Ron, still had the traits that they had maintained from the first seven books in this book. But they also became closer as friends, which I was very happy to see. And then Elvis and Scorpius also became very good friends very quickly, which Again, it's amazing because Draco Malfoy and Harry Potter weren't friends at all during their time at Hogwarts. They were bitter enemies and, you know, they didn't be really become friends until the end of the seventh book, which is really cool. So I was very happy to see Draco's son and Harry's son make a some sort of a friendship as this book continued. As far as the plot, the plot is kind of where I think a lot of the reviews differ from one another. You either love the plot or you hate it. It is very different. This takes a lot of fantasy elements that we had in the first seven books and kind of turns them on their head. So we had an element of time travel and it was interesting. The time travel element was something that threw me off a little bit at the very beginning when it was first introduced. But as the story goes along, it definitely takes a turn for the better, if that makes any sense. And I'm trying not to spoil the book for anybody who hasn't read it, but right now I am going to spoil it. So if you haven't read this book, I would pause the video here 
and go read it and then come back. The, you know, Albus and Scorpius go back in time to Harry's fourth year during the Triwizard Tournament to save Cedric Diggory to make his father, who is now in a nursing home for wizards, happy, I guess, which I found interesting, but I don't think it was necessary. And again, I think that's what a lot of people had problems with, but I again, had very differing opinions from that. Also, going in more in depth with the plot, I liked how we had a Potter that was not in Gryffindor. Albus ends up in Slytherin, which is my house. I'm actually wearing my Slytherin robe right now because hashtag Slytherin pride. And I thought that was interesting. I had a feeling down deep down in my heart that he would end up in Slytherin, but I didn't know for sure. So that was really, really cool. And then the final thought I have on this book is the writing style. So the writing style was my least favorite part of this book. I think that it was way too different than the original seventh book, or the seven books in the original series than it needed to be. I thought it was great at times, and then I didn't like it at times. And to me, to be honest, and this is what knocked it down from being a five-star read for me, is it felt like fan fiction. This entire book felt more like fan fiction than a novel. And personally, I don't normally have problems with things that feel like fan fiction. I used to write fan fiction all the time, primarily for Harry Potter and Star Wars. When I was a little younger, I was probably about 13 when I was writing fan fiction. But this was too, too similar. This felt like... John Tiffany and Jack Thorne took their idea, wrote a fan fiction about it, and then decided to publish it into a play slash novel, which bothers me. And it just, it didn't work out in the end for me. And I really wish that they just had stuck to something similar to the original series. And again, I think that is another element that really plays into people's negative opinions about this book. But overall... This book was a great book and I do recommend it if you are a Harry Potter fan. At least give it a try. It's not going to be for everybody but we all have our own opinions and overall in the end I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. So that is all I'm going to have for this video guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you have not already. Also be sure to let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts on the cursed child were. I would love to hear them. And if you guys are interested in seeing any of my other reviews I will link a playlist down below in the description bar along with all my social media links. My Twitter, Instagram, Goodreads, and blog are always linked down below. And with all that being said, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you soon for another video. Thanks for watching everybody. Bye!